Hi, Laura. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for joining us on the Geek Centric Podcast. Uh, and I'm looking forward to chatting with you about the music you composed uh, for the Marvels. I actually had a chance to preview the tracks. And I have to say, there's just such a vibrancy to the overall score that I, I really enjoyed. And it got me thinking, you know, you, you have such a, a great body of work and you've done work in video games, you've done work in television. Is there anything specific about working on a Marvel project that changes your creative process compared to other projects you've worked on? I think this, the size and scale and scope is just big. And you're given a massive canvas to play with and a big orchestra. So I think that you want to think about really being able to fill those spaces and write the biggest, baddest, coolest music you possibly can. Yeah, well, I think you achieved that oh. with, with some of the, the fantastic music. I think it, again, as I mentioned, I, I was able to preview it and there's there's just such a great mix of like heroic strings and booming percussions. I love the choir elements as well. And there were some cool sound effects. Like it sounded like at one point there's like a, a vortex effect that's happening. It's pulling the music through and it just, it created such a, um, a visual in my mind from just listening to it. And I just wanted to know like what goes into selecting the right instrumentation for the right moments? And were there any inspirations for you when building this score? Well, let me tell you, first of all, about those weird vortex elements, because they're actually pretty cool. The, everybody knows the film. There's parts of the film that happen in space. So the mm -hmm. first thing you want to think about is what does space sound like? And I created a lot of environments for that. One is that I actually went to a prop house and rented space junk like stuff that had fallen from the sky. And because oh, we're cool. on because we're on a geek podcast, I I I think these specifics your people might dig, right? So yeah, like sure. like literally pieces of rockets and stuff we played and created sound effects for. I also commissioned this incredible woman, Christina Talon, who's a data scientist as well as a composer, to create sonifications based on plot points, which of course I will never reveal even after everybody's seen the film. Um, um, right. So just like, what does this particular, what could this particular thing sound like? So if you take the, the data and then translate that into music, that's what a sonification is. And finally, I hired the genius percussionist, Evelyn Glennie. And the thing about Evelyn Glennie that is extraordinary is she's profoundly deaf. So she feels sound rather than hears sound. And that is what sound is like in space. You can't really hear anything, but you feel it in your body. And so the kinds of sounds that she created from her bevy of percussion play a big part in creating those kind of vortex and, and unusual sounds. So those three elements, as well as multiple choirs and a massive orchestra, were really the, you know, the, the building blocks of the score. Well, I, again, it just, there's so many rich layers to the score. So thank you for sharing some insight in regards to how you kind of came up with some of those very beautiful and unique sounds. Um, there is one thing I noticed though, throughout the score, I didn't catch any of the existing themes for our three heroes. However, there seems to be a new theme. I, I think it's called higher, further, faster together. I think that's the running name for it. I didn't have track names, but how did you kind of come up with this new theme for this trio of heroes? Well, I mean, we talked a lot about this. And I think the most important thing, and this this comes from Nia, is that the Marvels is not Captain Marvel 2. The Marvels is its own thing. So you have to think about the Avengers in relationship to Captain America or any of the, the mm -hmm. single off films. Of It's more about creating a theme that really is about this collaboration between or among the three of them. And so mm -hmm. a new theme had to be created for that. And so that is mostly what the major theme uh, is. There's a little bit of Ms. Marvel in there. There is a theme created for the villain uh, and lots of different themes created for different emotions uh, connected to, to the film. But I think that the Marvels deserved a new theme for this kind of epic collaboration. 
Yeah, the theme serves as a symbol of unity and and uh, a sort of collective togetherness. So I think that that really does work. And I loved how it was sprinkled throughout the entire score. Um, Laura, thank you so much for taking the time to geek out with me about your music. Uh, I absolutely adored it. And I, I look forward to hearing what you do next. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you bringing me on the show. Bye, geeks. Hey, Mary. My name's Justin. Welcome to the Geek Centric Podcast. How are you? Good. So nice to meet you, Justin. Thank you for the time. This is awesome. Well, thank you for making the time. Um, I had a chance to screen some of the footage and it looks fantastic. I'm very excited to chat with you about it. Um, first, though, I just wanted to kick things off. You've been with Marvel for, for a little while. I thought maybe we could find out a little bit more about what that journey's been like leading to the Marvels. Absolutely. I'm lucky enough to have spent the majority of my career at Marvel. I interned with Marvel back during college um, over 10 or 11 years ago now wow. um, and began working full time with Marvel uh, back in like 2015. Um, it's been amazing to come up at this company where everyone is so supportive, um, where the best idea wins um, and we're all encouraged to bring our best creative to the table. Um, I mm -hmm. also um, was lucky enough to uh, produce WandaVision. Right. That was my first spin around the dance floor. Um, and it was so fun to push the creative bounds of our storytelling with that show. And we're doing that again here with the Marvels, especially with the idea of entanglement and this team up movie that Marvel hasn't really seen outside of an Avengers movie. It's um, been an incredible experience. Well, yeah, you know, going off of that, you know, the Marvel seems to have a very different tone based on the footage I saw uh, compared to other MCU movies. It's it's a little bit more fun and a little a little less loom and doom of what we're getting with with Loki and and as season two, right? So, uh, in your opinion, I wanted to know how how do, how do you feel this film sets itself apart while still fitting into the larger MCU? The tone of this movie really reflects the taste of all the people that made it. It's Nia's vision through and through. Um, mm -hmm. She's a huge fan of the comic book space, and the first meeting that we had was just full of chats about all of our favorite characters. It has been a total joy to make a film with someone who's just as much um, a fan. And this movie is different than other Marvel movies in that, again, it's a team up. Um, outside of the Avengers, and we've never seen that before. It's fun, it's fast paced, the movie really cooks. Um, yeah. And it's really the chemistry between the three leads that makes the whole story sing. And I think that's why you get the sort of fun dynamic that you get from this movie is because of their dynamic and obviously Kamala Khan being the geek that she is. Uh, so, you know, it's it's tons of fun to to see them all kind of interacting with each other. Now, I, I imagine you've seen this movie quite a few times already. Um, so I wanted to know, you know, given each time you watch it, is there something that you're specifically proud of from this movie that just like stands out and you're just like, yes. My goodness, so many things. There's so much to yeah. be proud of with this movie. And uh, despite the fact that I've seen it a million times and our crew has seen it a million times, even in the last days in the in the mix, just mm -hmm. putting the final touches on the movie, we were cracking up the whole way through. Everyone can delight in something in this film and that's what's so great. I, of course, am a huge fan of the Fleur Kittens and the chaos they bring to the screen. <laughs> of course, that that's very fitting. Um, now, we, as you mentioned, we do get to see our heroes go through this sort of entanglement situation. I wanted to know if if you could be entangled with any one of these heroes, Monica Rambo, Ms. Marvel, or Captain Marvel, who would you choose and why? Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a really incredible question. I think I would have to say Kamala Khan because she always winds up in crazy adventures doing wild stuff. And she's a total blast of a character and I would love to live in her world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, you're an absolute blast, Mary. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us on the Geek Centric Podcast. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward to seeing more of the movie. Thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoy it. I really appreciate the time.